What's up guys, Lionel here coming to you from inside my shop. Um, this video is going to be over a new tool that I built. And I'm pretty excited about it because um, as most of you guys know, I'm an avid bow hunter. Um, and I prefer to work on all my own stuff. Uh, not only do I know what's being done to it, but um, it gives me a better idea of, of how my equipment's working and, and um, what needs to be done to, to tweak it and stuff. So... Um, that being said, the one thing I was lacking in this shop is a bow press. And after doing a bunch of research online, I found a bunch of bow presses, man, but they're really pricey, um, 500 plus. And the, the, what I was using was this Nighthawk, um, bow press. Let me grab it for you real quick. It's kind of tied up in all my stuff. Um, I was using this and... It's kind of a, a mobile bow press. Let me put this camera in the device. It's kind of like a take it anywhere you want type of bow press. And the way it works is um, you get this other piece and put the screws on there. And what happens is your bow limbs go in through here and then your cams kind of sit here. And the way it works is you have one on top and one on bottom. And this originally had a strap that would connect the two. And it busted uh, some time ago. So what I was having to do was put a ratchet strap from here to the bottom one. Um, ratchet it together. And what this does is it takes your limb and it kind of uh, bends them together. And lets you loosen up cables and work on peep sights and stuff like that. So this was very time consuming. And I it worked, but I'm not a big fan of it. So today's video is what the alternative is. And it's this little guy right here. So I built my own uh, version of the Easy Green Bow Press. And I have to say it's working amazingly well. I have a 2018 PSE. I have this thing, I think it's a 2015. And I've pressed them all. I've pressed uh, the wife's bow um, and, a, and a friend's bow and it, it's all worked so far. So let me give you a little rundown <clears throat> on how this little sucker works. So the main thing here is the fingers. Uh, all this other stuff is just scrap metal that I had laying around the shop. Um, welded it together, got it all nice and square, and voila. But the bow fingers, these these I got off of eBay. I think they were like 60 bucks um, shipped. They're all CNC machined. Really nice um, squared bow fingers. And I think this is the make or break part of this whole project. Um, I did dip these fingers in, um, oh crap, what is that stuff called? Flex Seal. I did dip them in Flex Seal to kind of put a little rubberized coating over them, but it was really thin and soft, and I, I didn't really like the way it, it, it was coming out. I didn't want this metal to, um, uh, you know, damage my limbs or anything. So what I ended up doing was just throwing a wad of uh, black tape, electrical tape over the top of them and it's been working so let me give you some details on this uh the way i did this is i got a i cut a piece of half inch all thread and to uh adjust my in and out what i'm gonna have to do if i need to go wider or shorter depending is pull this nut off and then add washers to this center side um and then you know move move the the finger out incrementally as i need and i would do it on both sides if i needed to as of now this width has uh pressed everything that i've needed and i think right now it's sitting at uh just over an inch um inside span same as the other side the body of this is two inch heavy walled square tubing this piece was actually on an old bumper that i put together years ago uh, I cut off, you can see all the divots, I cut off all the extra uh, stuff and stuff that was on here. Um, the movable part is inch and a half, thin walled square tubing. Uh, same for the for these little um, outriggers here, these little fingers that come off to the side. But yeah, this thing's working great. There's a piece of 5 8 inch all thread that runs all the way through um, the tube. Right here, somewhere um, on this piece here, I welded a nut on there so I would, the all thread would, would grab and move this in and out. Um, that being said, 
this this piece uh, inside of this side what I did is I put two nuts together and I tacked them um, so that way I could have positive engagement um, forward and back if not <clears throat> when you started to back this out your handle would move out and then you would need to push it right in to move that piece back out and I didn't really care for that idea what I wanted was positive um, engagement forward and back um, what else what else what else oh <clears throat> this coupling is a 5 8 inch coupling all this stuff I just picked up at tractor supply one afternoon um, I did make this removable so you pull this pin out and then this whole thing kind of unscrews the reason I did make this removable is because I wanted I wanted this to be serviceable if I needed to <clears throat> um, I have grease on the alt piece of all thread just to kind of smooth things up a bit but you pull this off this washer is kind of just like a wear plate and then you can push this and that whole piece will come out and you can service it or, or what have you but all in all this thing has been working really well um, I put this back together and then I want to show you guys the mounting bracket that I made this hole has to line up here. There we go. Maybe. Ah, got it. Uh, so back to the mounting bracket. So this bench back here is where I work on rifles and little projects that I have. So I couldn't have this thing permanently mounted. So what I did is I got a piece of uh, four inch plate. Um, cut it. I'm not even sure what that is. It's probably like. I don't know seven eight inches drilled some holes in it and um, screwed it to the bench uh, let me put this let me put this back in this camera back on the mount how this works so the way this base works is I got a, a couple of I had to thread this with some quarter 20s because if not it kind of has some wiggle to it because like I said this is just scrap metal um, inch and a half square tubing into two inch there's some wiggle room there uh, but this is how this works right here these things just stay mounted um, I can get the press I can mount it up on the wall over there out of the way when I'm not using it and then when I do need to use it get that put it in there um, tighten down these pieces of quarter 20 and then it's a nice solid solid mount um i'm gonna go ahead and show you how quick and easy it is to press a bow versus the old way that i had been doing it for quite some time so if any of you guys have ever worked with the easy green or anything like that um, it works the exact same way so you just get your limbs lined up and then you crank away and you'll see this cable go slack so everything's nice and and loose. Uh, you can work on peep sight, cam timing. Make sure everything falls right back into place. All right, you just keep unscrewing it, and there you go. Bow comes out, and you're ready to go. Uh, I really love this press. Um, the easy green, I think, was sitting somewhere around 500 bucks uh, shipped. I think I have less than $100 total, uh, including the limbs, including these fingers, into this press. So, um, anyways, guys, I just wanted to show you the new addition to the uh, to the shop here. If you guys have any questions. Um, I was thinking about putting together a parts list, and I can do that. I haven't, but if you guys are wanting to build something like this, I can put a parts list together. If you want to uh, throw a comment down at the bottom that you want one, uh, I can put one together. I'll put it in the comments, and you guys can just screenshot it or what have you. But there you go, guys. A homemade bow press for 100 bucks, and you're up and running. Hope you guys like this. If you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow this channel. I think I got somewhere around 200 viewers. So we're getting up a little bit, to me anyways. Um, hope you guys enjoy the content. Thanks for watching.